Hello everyone, welcome back to Reading with Leanne. We are going to read the book Manfish. And this is a story of Jacques Cousteau. This is written by Jennifer Byrne and illustrated by Eric Pauvere. So, looking at the cover of the book, we see a diver in a wetsuit with an oxygen tank and some goggles. Let's see what this book over here is about manfish. Hmm. Opening up our book, we can see the diver again. Bubbles rising through the silence of the sea. Silvery beads of breath from a man deep, deep down in a strange and shimmering ocean land of swaying plants and fantastic creatures. A manfish swimming, diving through the unknown, exploring underwater worlds no one had ever seen and no one could ever have imagined. So, our story starts many years before in France with a little boy born under the summer sun. His parents named him Jacques. From the beginning, little Jacques loved water. The way it felt on his hands, his face, his body. The water made him wonder. He wondered why ships floated, why he floated, why rocks sank. One day, Jacques read a story about a man who hid underwater by breathing through a long tube. Jacques tried it and discovered it was impossible. Hmm. It'd be a little tricky, right? You can imagine being like a, having a straw going underwater, making your straw point outside. So it's probably possible, right? But probably a little bit tricky. He dreamed that someday he would be able to breathe underwater for real. At night, Jacques dreamed he could fly with the birds among the clouds with his arms stretched out like wings. Jacques spent his days playing, experimenting, and creating. He wrote little books that he illustrated with his own drawings. And he was fascinated by machines. He studied blueprints and built a model of a crane that was as tall as he was and actually worked. Look at him fiddling away. Movies fascinated Jack too. He wanted to know how they were made, how the cameras worked and how chemicals made pictures appear on film. Jacques saved his allowance, penny by penny, until he had enough to buy a small home movie camera. The first thing he did was take it apart and put it back together. Then he began to film everything around him. He put his brother, cousins, parents, and friends in his movies. He dressed up as a villain with a painted on mustache and made some very villainous films. Jacques was always the star, the director, and the writer, and usually the cameraman. Can you imagine having a camera filming, but then going in front and then also telling people what to do, right? Lots of roles. When Jacques finished school, he joined the French Navy. His ship sailed all around the world, and everywhere he went, he filmed what he saw. In China, he filmed men catching fish with their bare hands. 
They held their breath under water for many minutes. <gasps> Jack wondered what that would be like. One day at a beach, a friend gave Jack a pair of goggles with rubber frames and glass to look through. Jack wore them into the ocean. Beneath the water, he was surrounded by silvery green forests of sea plants and fish he had never seen before. Everything was silent and shimmering. It was a whole new world. Do you spy a sea snake? What about a stingray? <gasps> what about a place? I think that's a place over there. The fish that's covered, uh, blending in with the sand. The clownfish in the stinging anemone. The eel lurking in the shadows. The octopus, the crab. When he came up, <gasps> He saw cars, people, buildings, and telephone poles. Once again, he went below into the magical underwater world. At that moment, Jacques knew his life was changed forever. His eyes had been opened to the wonders of the sea. Jacques and his friends, Philippe and Didi, began to dive together. They experimented to see how long they could stay underwater <gasps> and how deep they could go. Jacques created a waterproof case for his camera to film the amazing kingdom he and his friends were exploring beneath the surface. They made rubber suits to keep themselves warm, and flippers to help them kick better. But Jack wanted to stay down longer than just one breath at a time. He realized he needed to take more air with him, enough air to explore the mysterious depths and vast expanses of the ocean, to swim through the sea as free as a fish. He wanted to become a man fish and he began to work on just how to do it. On a warm summer day, Jacques stepped into the blue Mediterranean Sea with this new invention. He called it the Aqualung. Aqualung because aqua means water and our lungs <gasps> are the part of our body that holds the air we breathe. Below the surface, Jacques swam and glided and dove. He did flips and somersaults. He stood upside down on one finger and laughed bubbles into the sea. Jacques could breathe beneath the water. Now he could swim across miles of ocean, his body feeling what only scales had felt, his eyes seeing what only fish had seen. The water made him feel like he was flying, just like in his dreams. Jacques had done it. He had become a man fish. Jacques was ready to explore the oceans of the world. He needed a boat and found a big old wooden navy ship called Callispo. In a year, he turned it from a warship into a explorer ship. Jacques, Philippe, and Didi gathered a crew, their aqua lungs, their hopes and their dreams, and set off to explore the inside of the sea to film a world that no one had 
ever seen before. On their journey, they dove deep into a seascape of plants, green and purple, prickly plants, red branchy plants, spongy plants, wispy, feathery, swaying plants, slow dancing to the rhythms of the sea. They discovered that plants could feed you, that plants could poison you. Plants that look like fish and fish that look like plants. They swam with giant whales, hitched rides on sea turtles, and made friends with porpoises with shining eyes and smiling faces. They filmed fierce and frightening sharks, so strange and dangerous that Jacques and his crew had to build cages, not for the sharks, but for themselves, so they could make their movies without being eaten. Their cameras captured camouflage scorpion fish, ugly as toads with poisonous spines. Dorados, bright shining fish that glow the colors of emeralds, sapphires, and rubies. Checkerboard fish with red and white checks from head to tail. Deep down, they discovered a kingdom of giant rays, fish that fly through water with wings that swim. They came face to face with a fish as big as a truck with long fangs, lips like giant tires, huge saucer eyes. They called it the truck fish. On the bottom, they found pink ghost crabs with eyes on long stalks buried so deep in the sand they looked like a garden of eyes. And flute fish with heads like horses and bodies the shape of tubes sticking out of rocky openings like pencils in a cup. Everywhere the Calispo went, Jacques and his crew made films of what they saw. Films that played in movie theaters, films that played on TV. Millions of people all over the world discovered the wonders of the sea for the very first time with Jacques Philippe Didi and their adventurous crew. After Jacques spent most of his life making movies about the sea, he saw something happening, something shocking. Plants that used to be alive and healthy were being poisoned. Fish were sick and dying. Jacques saw that people without realizing it, were slowly killing the sea and its creatures by dumping garbage and poisonous chemicals into the ocean he loved so much. Jacques knew what he had to do. He had to make movies. Movies to warn people. Movies to save the sea. Jacques spoke to presidents to kings and queens, to people all over the earth, asking them to help save our oceans, our planet. And he spoke to children. Jacques dreamed that someday it would be you, exploring worlds never seen, never imagined, whole new worlds, silent and shimmering, worlds that are now yours to discover, to care for, and to love. And look at Jack. He's a lot older now, right? 
So he's teaching facts about the ocean to the kids, just like you. If you have this book at home, there is the author's note, uh, just talking a little bit more about Jacques Cousteau and also some more resources where you can learn more about Jacques and ways that we can take care of the planet we live in. So I recommend you kind of give that a read through at home. Uh, this is the end of our story over here and quite remarkable, right? I don't know if you've ever been diving before or snorkeling maybe on vacation, but Jacques was one of the very first people to do so. Uh, and we really didn't know a lot about the ocean before him. So thanks for reading this with me, Manfish, a story of Jacques Cousteau by Jennifer Byrne and Eric Huberet.